we didn't have any power. Um, all the outlets quit working. It turned out that this, uh, the gas stove has pilot lights and the pilot lights are uh, ignited with electricity. And so they had this skinny little um, three-bedroom, two-bath apartment in the high-rise building with security. And some of you know, I know that we have a lot of new people, that we've been abroad 10 years and we've never paid more than three or four hundred dollars for three or four bedroom houses and apartments furnished and unfurnished. <laughs> a lot of times we talk about prices and we came up with a rule of three and four years ago when we first landed uh, in Ecuador was our, the first place uh, we, we moved to and we lived here for eight years and it was called the rule of three and four because we did a um, comparison with the earnings talking about the earnings the median household income of uh, Ecuadorians compared to a North American median income right and so the uh, difference was three to four uh, from a median Ecuadorian household income to median uh, North American household income. So that was a three to four difference. And so therefore the prices, as a general rule for somebody that just landed, didn't speak any Spanish, and was trying to kind of wrap their head around what I should be uh, paying for this and that. Nowadays though, we, t we talk a lot about what, uh, you know, well, for example, we live in the $300 apartment. <laughs> you know, when we're still, we're still paying $300. 10 years later, we're still paying three or four hundred dollars. The first house we had was two hundred fifty dollars. So but the rule of three and four we have a link uh, underneath the video and it was a really easy and simple rule to understand which can also be used if you go when you travel to any other country. You can take a look at say the median household income of that country compared to you know the median household income in North America and then you can divide and decide you know, uh, what uh, things should be priced based on that number that you uh, divided and came up with, whether it was rule of two and three or whatever it is for that particular country. So, but there's a little bit more to it than that, which we cover in our amazingly low cost uh, travel and live abroad like a pro course, which is also in the links. Check it out if you really want to know the inside skinny on how to do things exactly the way we do them. We also have over a thousand videos just on Ecuador. We traveled all over Ecuador. We also uh, covered uh, southern Italy, eastern Europe, and we've done quite a bit on Panama. Speaking of which, I can't believe how much foreigners are putting up with just to go to Panama. Now I have did a video, if you haven't seen it, it's called Locked Out of Panama. That, that video is a, our response to the ridiculousness and the draconian um, issues that are going on there. Uh, it was really a, a warning video to potential expats that, uh, of what's going on. And I'm seeing on social media, people are just going through a lot of abuse uh, from authorities and uh, it's unbelievable how much abuse people will put up with if they think it's for their own good and in this case ignorance is absolutely not bliss but you know uh, we're doing what we can to warn people of what's going on uh, with uh, some of these issues there's an awful lot going on also right now in the states right now is a it is a very tippy situation uh, in the states. I'm sorry to see what's happening over there. Yeah, they're all crunchy. Yeah, they are. I told well, you not to make no, them crunchy, man. No, uh, uncrunch after you put uh, all the sauce. Excuse me. The cook decides how he wants 
to make the And I was the cook. No, I cooked these. No, I was the chef. The chef orders all the uh, the other little chef guys around. All right. So that. Is there going to be enough food? Sure. Enjoy. Yeah, Still, you should do one on the inside. More meat over oh. here. Cheese, it goes on the inside. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough of the cream also to do this. You having fun? Okay. Yeah. Well, when you're on the video, you always have to say, oh, this is so fun. Mmm, Angela, those look really good. So I wanted to address some of the comments. Uh, we're getting a lot of new people on the channel. One of them was about the Califon. The other ones were from Puerto Rico. They also have issues with the cylinders. Yes, they are called cylinders. Oh, some people mentioned about my moving. Now, if you go back, if you're new to the channel, go back to some of those videos where we were sitting down or standing and talking, but it was, uh, it's not that it was uh, necessarily because we were in a different country in Southern Italy or somewhere else, but take a look at the difference of how still I am in those videos. And the reason is because I'm at sea level. <laughs> I was born and raised at sea level. I can handle a little bit of height, but this is 8,400 feet, and I'm telling you, it does something to your, your, your system. It just speeds it up because you're not, just the lack of oxygen speeds up your system to try to get more oxygen. There's a lot going on there, and it causes this, this fidgety, fidgetiness that a lot of people uh, mentioned in the comments they don't like. So I'm gonna try really, really hard not to do that uh, so and there's also videos coming up uh, with more information on that uh, got a few new people from Puerto Rico on the channel which is interesting because it is Puerto Rico is a place we actually considered before we went abroad we considered moving to Puerto Rico for quite some time actually it was on our radar uh, it's, uh, it, it just had a lot of the things uh, that would, would have been a draw for us, you know, uh, on our bucket list because, well, it's an island, there's lots of beaches and uh, there's mountains, it's Spanish, it's still the U.S., which makes it super easy uh, immigration-wise. You know, I think, I think when we considered it, um, even back in those days, it seemed like the prices were much, much higher than a lot of other places. There's some guy wrote in about, uh, He's got a water heater. I don't always get to the comments, but I do I try to. He's got a furnace and a water heater in the basement, and uh, you know I'm not there. I can't see it, so I, I don't know. But the previous video, if you haven't seen it, I talked about the hazards of uh, of gas and uh, how just people routinely have major accidents, and some people die from it all over the world. The Califon here, the way it's uh, designed. It's in the closet. There's a special Califon, which is the water heater closet, but it's vented to the outside of the building. So, I mean, it is in a closed room, but it's vented to the outside. So it is not venting to the inside of the apartment. So, You know, that's the main consideration that uh, we spoke about in the previous video um, is about having that ventilation, that airflow that uh, a lot of people, especially Americans, aren't accustomed to, to opening windows and, and making sure. So I just wanted to answer that fellow in case I, I don't get to it on the comments. Talking about the danger of gas in these dwellings in uh, Latin countries. We came home, uh, we were just doing the normal thing that we were doing and all of a sudden, boom, we heard a, we heard a boom uh, and uh, everything shut off. Uh, the overhead lights were still working. This happened for two days. It took them two days for the building uh, repair people to come up here and check it out. And it turned out, here, let me get this. It turned out that this, uh, the, the gas stove has pilot lights and the pilot lights are 
uh, ignited with the electricity. And so they had this skinny little, um, see if, if you can see that, it's all burnt up. And every time, the, the breakers flipped them, every time when I tried to flip them back on, they would, boom, they would flip back off. And, you know, there was a, we, we even saw a, like a flash, and it was really scary. We thought maybe there was going to be a fire, and, um, you know, that uh, the apartment was going to burn down. We just didn't know what to expect. But it turned out this wire was burning in the back of the stove. And apparently, because we use the oven, hey, you know, we cook. <laughs> we we actually cook food and uh, and so it got so hot back there that this thing was just sitting there melting and burning and uh, so I'm so glad uh, even though it took him two days and we we had to move um, our computers and uh, our mattress out here just to be able to plug things in and the fan and this and that so we were sort of in disarray for uh, for a couple of days here but uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad that they, they figured this out. Yeah, it's just a little, little skinny little uh, extension cord type wire, which, I mean, it's on a, a major appliance. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't... <laughs> Guys, you don't put these on major appliances. They have to have heavy-duty appliance uh, wiring, uh, you know, for safety reasons. But, so, yeah, understanding the little things like that that can be a hazard and uh, and cause you lots of problems. Um, so we decided, well, we're just going to use the barbecue lighter to, to you know, to ignite the, the gas stove, and that works great. And so now we've removed the hazard of the skinny little extension cord burning and melting, causing a short, maybe even a fire in an old apartment. So anyway, I hope I inspired you to be more careful and take some of these hazards seriously so that you can be safer in your retiree lifestyle at home or abroad. Thanks for watching.